Welcome to another edition of E.W. Jackson for America. I don't quite have everything smoothed out. I thought I did, but almost, almost. We're almost there. But great to be with you again today. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, I hope that you had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. I, I hope that you really enjoyed yourself. I've gotten great reports from Christians who go to church about what wonderful services they had. We had a great service ourselves. I talked about the irresistible power of the resurrection. If you didn't catch that on Monday, if you didn't catch it on Sunday, we re-aired it yesterday. So it is on our Facebook page live. And of course, it's also available on YouTube. The irresistible power of the resurrection and the power of the resurrection resides in every Christian and that power is absolutely irresistible. You can't be kept down. You cannot be kept down. If you are a Christian and you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead and caused you to be raised from the dead when you were saved, when you were born again, you cannot be kept down. Okay? That's, that's irrefutable. That's absolute. That's why I'm so hopeful. That's why I'm so optimistic. That's why I know we're going to win this cultural war that we are in in our country where people are trying to be. I've got the, the uh, I've only got six. I want to get seven, you know, get the number of perfection. Anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-Semitic, anti-freedom, anti-God, anti-Bible. What else are they anti? <laughs> I guess, I guess you could say, um, Oh, they're anti-life. Oh, my goodness, of course. Anti-life. Yeah, these, these people, I'll tell you, they're the seven demonic wonders of the world at this point. They really are. It's just, it's, it's terrible. But if Christ be not raised and our hope is in vain and we are of all men most miserable, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of those who slept. So... Done deal, folks. <laughs> Done deal. Okay, so I just wanted to say that right away. I hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. Uh, now, um, June the 11th, I hope you've got it on your calendar already. June the 11th, 7 p.m., Cornerstone Chapel, Leesburg, Virginia. We are going to host our Stand Awards Dinner. Our honorees are Brigitte Gabrielle, Johnny Hunter, Sandy Rios, I, I, I love all these people. These people are such wonderful people. Pastor Gary Hambrick, again, and of course, the late Bishop Dean Nelson, passed away uh, in December of last year at 55 years old, but a great man of God and someone who made a tremendous contribution to the conservative movement in our country. So please remember that standamerica.us is the website you get all the information you want on there standamerica.us tickets are 125 dollars even if you can't come if you live somewhere in the country and you can't be there uh make a contribution it's our biggest and most important fundraiser of the year uh at least half of our budget is provided by this dinner and so folks i i can't stress how important it is uh, to us in order for us to continue the work that we are doing. I, I really believe the very important work of contributing to helping save this country. Okay, I think that's one. Oh, oh yes, and let me mention also that I will be at, let me get it up here, I will be at Fairview Baptist Church, pastored by a great pastor, a dear friend, Pastor Paul Blair. I will be there on Sunday, April the 14th. Sunday, April the 14th. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I don't have the exact time of the service here, actually. Um, hmm. But I'll get that to you. But I'll be there on April the 14th, Fairview Baptist Church. Um at, um, wow, looking at my notes here, um, well, it's in Oklahoma, pretty sure it's close to Oklahoma City, forgive me folks, I'll get to you with the, um, with the particulars, let me just make a note to myself right now to do that.
Um, okay, good. April 14th, I'll be out in Oklahoma, somewhere near Oklahoma City, okay? And I'll give you the, 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 the exact address of Pastor Paul Blair's church, Fairview Baptist Church. All right. Um, I think that that's all I really need to announce at the moment. And so let me get, get to the issues of the day. Well, first of all, I want to say uh, I was on yesterday with my son, Earl W. Jackson, Jr. Um, he has a new podcast that he's working on, Mission Ready Men. Uh, so we were taping the first of that podcast. I don't know exactly when it's going to air yet. But as soon as I get that information, I will get that to you as well. So you can check that out. Got to check out my son's work. He's doing some great things for God. And I'm godly proud of the work that he and his wife are doing. They've got these businesses that I've mentioned, um, Carry Girl and Seven Armors. And Carry Girl started as a, as a business to, to basically provide products to women who were interested in self-defense with firearms. And so she does training with women and so forth. But God got a hold of them in the process and really revolutionized the business. So the business is now Christian themed and seven armors is, of course, based on Ephesians chapter six, put on the whole armor of God. And it is also Christian themed. Uh, and believe me, so you go to seven armors with a seven, seven armors dot com, I believe, seven armors dot com and carrygirlgear.com. Check those out. You Believe me, you won't be disappointed. They got some great, great products. I mean, really, they're very creative, and, and, and the products are great. Uh, and I'm praying and believing God that the business is really going to explode. It needs to, you know, in, in, in the best sense. I'll just, you know, people from all over the country being aware of it and, and buying their products and just basically flooding them with business. So if you haven't gotten any Carry Girl or Seven Armors products yet. If men, men, check out Seven Armors. Ladies, go check out Seven Armors for gifts for your husbands. Um, and ladies, go check out Carrie Gear, Gear Girl Gear. Uh, you will really enjoy it. I mean, it's like I said, it's, it's all very, very creative stuff. So, so I'll tell you about the podcast as soon as I have information exactly when that's going to air. And that's going to be airing, I believe, on a weekly basis. And I'll, and, um, uh, I guess that's all I need, really need to tell you about. But the websites, sevenarmors.com and carrygirlgear.com. Okay. The big flap, of course, for the last couple of days has been Joe Biden declaring Resurrection Sunday. Now, I prefer to refer to it as Resurrection Sunday. Easter is translated in the Bible, but the actual Greek word there is the Passover. Um, the translators translated it Easter because they knew it wasn't referring to the Jewish Passover. It was referring to the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they translated it Easter, which comes from, um, I forget the language that the word Ishtar comes from. But Ishtar is a, is, is a word that refers to pagan, a pagan goddess of fertility and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, this is what Christianity did, particularly in the Roman Empire, adapted a lot of things that were already happening uh, and just tried to bring them into the Christian culture rather than just discarding some things and saying, you know what, we're, we're just not, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be a part of that. I mean, like, you know, All Saints Eve, for example, was, which is really uh, Halloween, um, which is a pagan holiday that they tried to sort of bring into to the Christian calendar because they knew people were going to celebrate it. And so let's try to make it Christian. And I don't celebrate it at all. I mean, my attitude is I have no, it, Halloween has no place celebrating death, demons, ghosts, goblins, ghouls, vampires. That has no place in my life. I'm not interested at all. In fact, every September when they start dragging that garbage out, I just kind of, oh, brother, here we go. You know, you, every store you walk into, of course, I don't walk into many these days because I get most of my stuff online, but, well, you know, you do walk in and you got all this Halloween garbage, the witches and the warlocks and the, uh, I just can't, I can't be bothered with all that. It certainly has nothing to do with Christianity, that's for sure, okay? I mean, truth be told, neither do Easter eggs, <laughs> you know, or 
uh, or Easter bunnies have nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So at any rate, but uh, Joe Biden chose Resurrection Sunday to announce again, or the weekend, I think he actually announced it on Good Friday, that he was, we were gonna celebrate Transgender Visibility Day. Now, people have argued, well, but you know, January 31st is already Transgender Visibility Day and Resurrection Sunday just happened to fall on that day. Well, you know what? Joe Biden's always talking about what a great Catholic Christian he is. why wouldn't he say, well, you know what? Because it falls on, a, on the highest and holiest day of the Christian calendar. I'm not touching anything else. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. He, he could have said that. But of course, all of the crazy sexual perverts would have been up in arms. All 0.3% of them in the country would have been, you know, apoplectic. And apparently that's who he's pandering to. So he blasphemes the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by imposing upon it the celebration of of sexual perversion and depravity and degeneracy and sin. Thank you very much, Joe Biden. As if we didn't know where you stood in the first place, now we know. I mean, every time his press secretary, this flaming lesbian, stands up in front of everybody, uh, and she's only there because she's lesbian, and the fact that she's black just adds icing to the cake if you'll forgive the pun there, but you get my point. I'm not intending, I'm trying not insulting her on the basis of race, obviously, but I'm just saying the fact that she's black as an additional element, okay? I've said before, you know, and I don't know why black Christians put up with this stuff, but the Democrat party and the left have turned black and gay into one word. Like you can't say one without the other now. Because, we, of course, we know that they're the same thing. We know that they're, that they're the equivalent, right? And if you're both, woo, you are golden. Yeah. If you're both, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got to, I, I suppose I need to find some colorless language. Because even somebody could say, golden. He's trying to be, no. <laughs> but you get, you understand, right? If you are both, oh, just open the doors and let you in. Give you something to do because after all, you've got darker skin and you're a sexual pervert too. And wow, those are two great advantages now, right? I have been incensed from the moment this parasitic movement of these homosexuals and these gender confused people began to use black folks and the and the civil rights movement and piggyback on that and suck the blood out of that like a bunch of parasites i had been incensed from the very beginning and i still don't understand why black people put up with it i really don't why they allow people who are basically trying to sell their sexual perversion and make it the equivalent of an an absolutely neutral outward physiological characteristic, which is my complexion. My complexion tells you nothing about my character. It tells you nothing about my intelligence. It tells you nothing about my behavior. It tells you nothing. It just tells you that's the way I look. But a declared homosexual, they're telling you, they're, they're, they're really announcing their sexual proclivities. Well, who who wants to know that? Nobody does. It's their business. I've said many times, I, I, I walk into a room, nobody has to look and see me walk in and say, hmm, I wonder, is he black? Is, 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 is he an American of African ancestry? I wonder. Because, obviously, my appearance announces it doesn't announce everything because I've also got some European DNA in my background, but it doesn't, so it doesn't announce everything, but it announces that I've got some African ancestry in my background. When a person walks in who happens to be a homosexual 
or happens to be one of these other categories that they've concocted in the, in the wickedness of their own twisted minds, walks into a room. Nobody looks and says, hmm, I wonder if he's non-binary. I wonder if he's gender uh, fluid. I wonder if he's homosexual. I wonder if he's bisexual. No, nobody thinks about that. Nobody cares. Unless the person comes in like looking like uh, this idiot RuPaul or some drag queen. I mean, then everybody looks and goes, Oh, who's the fool? Who's the, who's the pervert? Who's the crazy? Who's the idiot? Most people can't, won't say that now because, you know, you'll get branded. You're homophobic. <laughs> you're, you're transphobic. <laughs> but, but, but most people, most people are thinking it. You know it and I know it. Most people are thinking it. <laughs> I'll tell you. So Joe Biden decides He is going to elevate homosexuality, transgenderism. And is there a difference, by the way? I mean, when you hear about these guys who say they're women, but still want to have intimate relations with women in the old fashioned way, where, where does it leave you? You know, you think about that stuff too, it'll, it'll, it'll leave you as confused as they are about how confused they are. But look, here's what I really want to get to on this. I watched a debate on Fox News. I don't watch Fox News very much these days, but every now and then I catch something and I was watching, um, I, think this, I think this is actually on The Five. And my wife likes the five, so sometimes that ends up on our television. I don't really watch it. I don't tune to it, but she does. So if, I, if, if she and I are in the same room, she has it on, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll watch some of it too. They were having this debate about what Joe Biden did. And I tell you, I, I've got to believe that, well, I shouldn't say I got to believe. If there were any born-again Bible-believing Christians on that panel, they hit it very well. And... Um, Hal Ford acted like, tried to talk like he's a Christian because Jesus is love, right? And, and you know, all of this mealy mouth dancing around and playing games with, and trying, basically, here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to grab God's hand and have God put his hand of approval on homosexuality and gender confusion and, and sexual perversion and have God's, well, you know, God, God doesn't have a problem with that. I mean, God loves everybody, right? And that's what we're celebrating, right? Well, look, God does love everybody. There's no question about that. And I would never deny that. But God's not putting his hand of approval on everybody. He wouldn't put his hand of approval on you and me until we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's when his hand of approval goes on us because now he that knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now we do have God's approval, his full unqualified approval, but we didn't have it before. This notion that somehow Christianity is all about Everything is okay, and everybody's okay, and everything goes, and it's, it's just complete nonsense. And when people talk like that, it makes me wonder whether they're Christians, whether they really know Jesus Christ. You know, it's one thing to go to church. It's another thing to have the church in you, or to put it more succinctly, it's one thing to be in church. It's another thing for the church to be in you. So you got a lot of people, I mean, look, there's some people who win the award for going to church, going to bust hell wide open. I mean, just uh, sit there in those pews and just, just wear holes in their trousers or their dresses or whatever they're wearing. And just, I mean, just, just do some church. And on their way to hell, don't know Jesus. In fact, he talked about such people. He said, Lord, he said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, did we not... Did we not do many wonderful works in your name? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. In other words, they go to church, but they don't know Jesus. 
And I mean, I'm not saying one way or the other because I don't know these people, but I'm saying the way they talk, the way they talked, you know, dancing and waltzing and tiptoeing and, you know, trying to say something that everybody can approve of. Look, homosexuality is sin. It is not approved by God. Now, yeah, there are other sins that are not approved by God. But as I've said many times before, let's be clear about something. And there are other sins that fall into this category. But the Bible calls homosexuality an abomination in the sight of God. And I really believe that that's because it is a double sin. It is a sin against God's moral law. God said, don't do it. It is a sin against God's natural law because God made men for women and women for men. Period. Jesus said so. The word says so. That's it. And this idea of trying to somehow, well, in fact, I think Harold Ford may have said, well, I, I maybe I, let me not put that on him, but I read other people saying, and so because God loves everyone, celebrating transgender visibility is, is consistent with, with celebrating Easter. I mean, to, 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 if you'll forgive me for paraphrasing my, my good friend, Andrew Womack, how dumb can you be and, be and still breathe? Because that's just downright dumb. Doing it on the day when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Jesus Christ was blasphemous. Blasphemous. You know what that means, right? It means it was an insult. It was an open insult to God. In the same way that when Barack Obama lit the White House up with rainbow colors, it was an open insult to God. <clears throat> These people are shaking their fists at God and saying, who do you think you are? We're not going to obey you. We're not going to follow you. We're not going to do what your word says. We're not going to listen to you, your church, your Bible, anything else. We're going to do what we want to do. What are you going to do about it? I mean, that's really, in effect, what they're doing. I mean, it's like putting, you know, when you were kids, you, you all remember, anybody remember this? When we were kids, when we got ready to fight. <laughs> you put, put a little thing on, you put a little chip on your shoulder. I think that's where the, where the phrase, he's got a chip on his shoulder, came from. That was a challenge to fight. Knock that off. Knock that off. I dare you. My father used to always tell me, if anybody does that, you knock them out. <laughs> you knock them out. <laughs> don't knock the chip off their shoulder but at any rate but you know that that's that's what they're doing with God put 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 the chip on it I dare you I dare you God I dare you to move it these people do not know they think they've got problems with criticism from human beings it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God that's where their real problem is and, and, and what, what, what saddens me most is these so-called Christians, these professed Christians, and, and maybe it's because their bosses tell them on these shows, don't, don't, uh, don't quote scripture, don't, don't tell people something is sin. I, I don't know. Maybe. But I mean, my goodness gracious, if you're on there to represent yourself and to speak what is in your heart, then why in the world would they tell you don't quote scripture or don't say some, something is sin? Because that's what somebody should have said. Somebody should, should have said, look, here's the problem. Being a person who wants to be another gender is sinful. It is rebellious against Almighty God. And you cannot juxtapose that with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is holy and righteous altogether, and not say that you are not affronting the church of the living God and affronting God himself. It's an affront to God. Period. I mean, somebody needs to say that. Now, they're not going to, you know, I used to be on Fox a lot. As you see, I'm, I'm not on Fox anymore. Because they apparently don't want that kind of talk. In other words, they don't want the truth. You know, here's an interesting thing. Uh, this came to me as I was reading this book by Robin Lane Fox. I keep messing up the title. But at the, at the actual title is The Classical World. I've been calling it Classical Greece. But it actually covers 
Greece and Rome, the, the Greek and Roman periods. But you know, he said something very, very interesting as I'm, in fact, I, I finished the book um, and I just read this yesterday. He said something very, very interesting. Um, and I think it was actually the Emperor Hadrian who said that, if I'm not mistaken, said this, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but it might have been some commentator who said, great oratory does not thrive without freedom. And I got to thinking about that. Hmm. In other words, and of course, we know what they were talking about, the great orators of the day, the Ciceros and, and so forth. Um, but they were, what, they were, what, what he was saying was, or at least this is the way I understand it, great speech comes from the heart. But if you are not free to express what, you, what is in your heart, you can't really speak, be a great speaker if, if basically what's coming out of your mouth is lies or, or obfuscations or, or avoidances. In other words, trying to, 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 to not get yourself in trouble with the emperor or, or trying not to get yourself in trouble with whatever power uh, you are concerned might be overseeing and listening to what you are saying. You Great oratory can't thrive in that environment. And you know what? When I listened to that, the, what they were saying about this, and it was all flat, it was all pretty much dry, I, I, I thought, man, it, he, he's got a point. Because when you are restricted, when you feel you can't say what is truly in your heart, you can't really speak powerfully because you're too busy measuring your words and trying to figure out what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And, and it comes across as stilted and stunted and empty. I mean, we, we, we as Christians have got to break through that stuff and just say, look, let's just cut the cut to the chase here. This stuff is sin. It is rebellion against God, it is an abomination to God, it is morally wrong, it is morally degenerate, it is morally depraved. And we as a society don't need it because it is only dragging us into the muck and the mire. Period. And for the President of the United States to be endorsing this stuff just shows what a depraved individual he is. It shows that the man has got a degenerate heart. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. Joe Biden is evil because what that, that, that garbage was evil. Say, so, well, somebody probably put him up to saying that. Yeah, but... He didn't have to say it. He's the president of the United States. If somebody gives me some degenerate garbage to speak and I know it's wrong and I don't want to say it and I say it anyway, that becomes part of my own moral portfolio. Because I said it anyway. I, I said it. And you know, you keep lying to others and lying to yourself and spewing lies. Jesus said, what comes out of the heart defiles a man because what, uh, what comes out of the mouth defiles a man because what comes out of the mouth goes into the heart. So even if somebody put Biden up to saying it, once you start spewing the lies, the degeneracy, the depravity, even if somebody else gave it to you to say, once you start saying it, it goes into your heart and defiles you. We have a defiled and degenerate president. Not the first one we've had. Barack Obama was defiled and degenerate as well. And we've not, now we've, we, we see that now. We know it now. We know the man's always been weird, strange. I, I, of course, I said it from the beginning. I always said, now, oh my goodness, one of the worst reactions I ever got when I said, I said the idea that Barack Obama's a Christian is laughable. 
Oh, my goodness. When I ran for lieutenant governor, oh, they brought that one back to me over and over and over and over again. But it's the truth. So I said it. Didn't apologize for it. In fact, I said one time, jokingly, somebody said, well, you think Barack Obama is the Antichrist? I said, said, no, I don't think that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. I said, to think that Barack Obama is the Antichrist, knowing what the Bible teaches about the Antichrist, I said, would be theological malpractice. I said, but he might be a dress rehearsal. (laughs) And oh my goodness. Well, needless to say, instead of telling the joke, (laughs) well, actually, it's 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 a a bit of truth said in jest because I really believe these degenerate presidents are dress rehearsals. All, All degenerate leaders are dress rehearsals for the Antichrist, the ultimate degenerate leader, the ultimately depraved leader who is coming. But but it was, it was kind of said tongue in cheek, obviously. It was said with, with some humor. But when they picked it up, they, they ignored the joke and just said, E.W. Jackson said that Barack Obama's the Antichrist. But, you know, here again. They have their father the devil. The deeds of their father they will do. He was a liar from the beginning. The truth is not in him. He was a murderer and a liar. And that's, that's exactly what they are. They try to, if they don't murder you physically, try to murder your reputation and murder your... your um, uh, livelihood, murder you, your, your character, uh, and, and just basically do anything they think they can do in order to, to get at you. Now, you know, I plan to share with you some scriptures um, to, to sort of put this to rest so that we would not have to, it would not just be a matter of I said, they said, um, but I got a bunch of them, and I'm not going to be able to share them all. But in the time I've got, so so, so much for the nine, so much for the 30 minute podcast. <laughs> but in the time I've got, um, let me share a few that I that I um, oh here we go, here we go, right here. That I just I just kind of keep in my notes just to refer back to from time to time. Levit- Leviticus eighteen twenty two, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman; it is an abomination. And then the following verse says, "Nor shall you mate with any animal." All all the furries out there, make sure that they hear that. Nor shall you mate with any animal to defy yourself with it. Nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. An abomination, perversion. And notice, it's got homosexuality and bestiality right there in the same context. The 20th chapter of Leviticus. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. The blood shall be upon them. Now, I'm not calling for anybody being put to death. I'm just reading you what the scripture says in the Old Covenant. Remember, in the Old Covenant, it was very simple. You sin, you die. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 323, I believe it is, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death. So in the old covenant, because there was no gift of eternal life paid for yet, you sin, you die. And that was the penalty for most things. A lot of people don't understand that. That's why the Bible says the old covenant was a schoolmaster leading us to Christ. It was showing us that we need a redeemer because we couldn't meet the standard that God set for us on our own and that the only thing we could do was die trying. So we needed a kinsman redeemer to come and get us out of our trouble. And Jesus Christ is that redeemer. A lot of people don't attribute these texts, but these texts are referring to sodomites or people who are practicing or engaging in homosexual acts. First Kings 14, 24, they were perverted persons They were sodomites and they were temple prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. God told them, cast them out. 1 Kings 15, 12. And he banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that their fathers had made. He kicked them out. And again, I'm not calling for putting homosexuals in prison. I'm not calling for killing homosexuals or transgenders. So I have to say that, folks, because otherwise these leftists will just run with it and they say, E.W. Jackson came on and called for the killing of, you know, I mean, which is such nonsense. But they don't understand anything about the scriptures, so they're only too happy 
to pervert, since perversion is their way of life, they're only too happy to pervert what you say. Um, and it goes on talking about perverted persons. Uh, now, here's Deuteronomy 22.5. And I, I always put this <clears throat> with Leviticus 18.22. Uh, Deuteronomy 22.5. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Now, that about settles that, wouldn't you say? That about settles that issue. And I wasn't reading Bishop Jack, thus saith Bishop Jackson. <laughs> thus says the Lord. Deuteronomy 22, 5. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Now, just to put that in context, that's not talking about your wife jumps up, needs to throw something on, her husband's robe is right nearby. She grabs her husband's robe and throws it on. You know, you know it's not talking about that, right? It's talking about this drag queen garbage and all this, this so-called transgender, which I don't use that term, but so-called because you can't transition from a man to a woman or a woman to a man. It is impossible. It is physiologically impossible. It is psychologically impossible. It is genetically impossible. You, it is biologically impossible. You cannot do it. And God says don't do it. Don't even try it. And then, of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, which I've read for you many times. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, nor sodomites. And then it goes on to talk about thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. It says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were justified, you were sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the spirit, by the Spirit of God. It's not what you were, it's what you are. So when these people stand up and say, well, I'm proud to be, and then name some perverse garbage that they've, that's come out of the pit of hell. I'm proud to be non-binary, bisexual. What they're saying is, I don't want to inherit the kingdom of God. And if there is such a kingdom, I'm, I demand to be let in based on who I am, because I'm proud of my perversion. Proud perverts. How about that? And on their way to hell, and they don't know I'm their best friend and people like me because we're trying to get them off the hell-bound train and get them on the heavenly chariot. Now, that's true love, folks. That's true love. Not this wishy-washy, mealy mouth nonsense. Oh, well, I'm, I want to be nice. I don't want to offend anybody. To each his own, please. The, the, the consequences are too grave. To, to, and, and, and the command is too clear for us to be playing that game. Okay, so I wanted to, I wanted to get that uh, out to you. This is not a matter of Bishop Jackson's opinion. It's a matter of what the scripture teaches. I didn't even go into Romans 1. We won't take time for that right now. Let me get to, uh, oh my goodness, in the few minutes I've got, uh, let me just bring up a couple of other issues. I can't end the program without going into uh, illegal immigration. Folks, this crisis is getting worse by the day. Just read an article this morning uh, in Breitbart News. Uh, nine Brits were apprehended at the Canadian border. Now, our northern border is also being overrun. They were arrested. We now have a record number of people coming across our northern border. In fact, the latest report is that in the last, uh, what's the period of time we've got here? Uh, let me try to give that to you accurately if it's there. Uh, I think it's from September of 2023. They've apprehended people at the northern border from 66 different countries. Venezuela, India, Bangladesh, Haiti are included. 66 different countries of people coming across the border since the northern border since September. See, that's why I say, I don't care 
so they're Brit British, which means they're quote unquote white, right? I don't care. They've got to be arrested, detained, and deported. I don't care where they come from. I don't care the color of their skin. I don't care what language they speak. They've got to be arrested, detained, and deported. Preferably arrested and deported. No detention in between, but that's not always possible, obviously. I don't care where they came from. I don't care what the complexion of their skin is. I don't care what their ancestry is. They've got to go. They're coming into our country illegally, and they've got to go. Period. We're being overrun, folks. We are being overrun. And look, go to standamericapack.us, standamericapack.us. Make a contribution toward our Save America, Elect Donald Trump effort. It is an independent super PAC. It is not related in any way to the Donald Trump campaign. We have to be independent. We can't coordinate with the campaign. We can't even ask the campaign what they're doing and, and take action based on that. We have to be acting completely independently in order to be in keeping with the law. And that's what we're doing. But we, we, we are moving very aggressively to make sure that Christians understand. In fact, I think I'll cover that tomorrow, I'll deal with this issue of, well, Christians shouldn't be voting for Donald Trump because Donald Trump is in fill of the blanks. I want to address that tomorrow. The same way I addressed it, well, since, since Christianity is about love, at, uh, celebrating uh, uh, some kind of transgender visibility thing should be compatible with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So please. Uh, so, so yeah, let me let me let me address that tomorrow. Uh, in fact, and and I'm going to get further into this whole perversion because this, this stuff, folks, this is like a plague on the land. It really is. I think I told you this before, <clears throat> but I'll end the program with this because it is indelibly inscribed on my brain now, and really in my heart. Um, when that young man who was molested. Uh, by this Nickelodeon, this, this Nickelodeon pervert. Uh, let me see if I've still got that in my archives. I think I do. Um, wow, it's amazing how much, how much stuff I end up going through. But when he was arrested, charged, tried, found guilty, and the, and the guy showed up in court, um, he said, his side, the pervert, the pedophile's side of the courtroom was filled with Hollywood people there to support him. It was filled with them. He said on his side of the courtroom was him, his father, and his mother. On their side of the courtroom, he said it was filled with Hollywood people who were there to support this pedophile. And they wrote things like... <clears throat> Well, he would never have done this had there not been something going on. I mean, as if this child had seduced him. When it's clear that he spent years grooming this kid, getting him ready. And then, as I said, he said, um, when they asked him what was done to him, he said, I, 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 he said, I, I really, I can't talk about it. He said, I, I just... I can't find the words to talk about it. And then he finally said, I can't find those stories, but then he finally said, but look, imagine the worst sexual abuse someone could do to you. He said, imagine the worst. He said, all of that was done to me. And I mean, that, that to me eloquently and powerfully says it all. So I am convinced that there is a widespread move in the non, uh, no, let me put it this way, in the anti-Christian world, okay? The anti-Christian world, the people who are out there banging the drum and we Christianity this and Christianity is not that. Uh, I'll, I'll cover some of those stories too. Um, those people are committed to sexualizing children and using children for their own purposes. I, I think that, that that is an explicit part of their agenda, even though they won't make it explicit to us. I think that's exactly what they're up to. And we're going to stop them. 
in the name of Jesus. Well, look, that's going to do it. I better stop. Oh, my goodness. You really know what? I, 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 I'm back to my, my usual time, but it's important, important things need to be said. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. Go to our website, standamerica.us, to find out more about the Stand Awards dinner on June the 11th. Go to standamericapack.us, standamericapack.us, to learn about the Save America elect Donald Trump project that we're working on. And in the meantime, you stand up, step up, speak up, refuse to back up because we cannot be defeated if we will not quit because we are on God's side.